everyone. Welcome to the Coolman DIY Workshop. My name is Alexandra Ortiz, and this episode is going to cover how you can make a lovely planter box for those budding botanists at home. This is great if you want to try your hand at growing some plants but either don't have the yard space or simply want to jazz things up a bit, or you don't have to bend as much. Trust me, your back will thank you. For today's project, we'll need a circular saw or hand saw, a drill and bit set, clamps, a tape measure, a carpenter square, a sander. You'll also need four one by six by 16 foot pine planks, one two by two slat of wood, two inch outdoor wood screws, Koyman wood stain, exterior wood glue, sandpaper, pencil, safety goggles, and last but not least, your gloves. As with any project where you're working with sharp tools, take 10 seconds to pop on your safety goggles and gloves as a precaution against getting any stray splinters somewhere they don't need to be. To start, you're going to cut your number to size. Using your tape measure and pencil, mark out the following and grab either your handsaw or circular saw to get cut in. Here's what you'll need. Four two foot two by twos for our internal support. Eight two foot one by sixes for our two ends of the planter. Eight four foot one by sixes for our long sides. And last but not least, seven 24 and five eighths of an inch one by sixes for our base slats. Before jumping into assembly, take a moment to decide if you want a rough finish on your planter to get a rustic look, or if you'd like a smoother end product, meaning you're gonna have to sand the wood. It's also a good idea to stain everything ahead of time so there's no messy lines or mistakes you can't correct. Personally, my favorite thing about this design is the sort of puzzle look we've got going on at the sides as well as the lack of screws visible from the outside of the planter. Now I've already pre-drilled, sanded and stained these planks with Koyman's wood stain so we can get a jump on the next step. Let's get started. Lay four four foot long planks side by side with the pieces labeled number one at the top and the piece labeled number four at the bottom. Ensure your ends are flush with your carpenter square and grabbing your measuring tape, measure three quarters of an inch from the end and mark a line out with your pencil. Position these two slats outwards by the three corners of the inch. Take your time as a tiny mistake while making this step means you don't get the flush corners we're looking for in the finished product. You're going to want to pre-drill your 2 by 2s approximately an inch and a quarter apart so that two screws go into each plank. This is going to make your project a whole lot easier. Make sure to space them appropriately as you'll be coming from two sides to secure the ends to the sides. Next, you're going to glue the sword side of your four foot pieces. and clamp them into place. Now that we've got our gloves on, it's time to screw in the 2x2s to secure the four foot planks in place. Make sure that your 2x2s are flush with planks 1 and 3 before you start.
Repeat this on the other end. Securing both ends of your forefoot lengths makes it more stable and easier to handle. Do the same thing for the other long side of your planter. Position your forefoot side with the two by two facing upwards. Then take a two foot piece and screw it into place. Repeat this on the other end. We carefully place our partially assembled planter top down. All of the legs should be facing upwards. Place the remaining long side into the slots and screw it into place. Attaching the baseboards is relatively quick. Using your measuring tape, space them approximately three quarters of an inch apart and run some glue along the edge. Next, we're going to screw them into place. Now your planter is ready for the backyard. Gardening has never been more appealing than when I think about growing plants in this planter. Perfect for herbs right by the kitchen if you ask me. Add some galvanized meshing and some weed block fabric for drainage and a few bags of topsoil to get started. If you're inspired and decide to try your hand at making this project, let us know if you have any questions and be sure to tag us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for joining us here at Coinman and I hope you've enjoyed this video.